So let's talk about the most common unit cells. And again, a unit cell would be anything that you can copy and paste and get the structure of the entire uh, solid. And these are the three most common ones, or at least the three most uh, encountered ones, and they're easy to explain. Uh, and so let's let's go through each one of them in detail. Talk about the face-centered cubic, and I'll draw that in a second to show you, because this is this omits things. But the idea is that you have a cube of side A, right? A cube means that the, all the sides are the same. Uh, and then each face has got an atom, and then each corner has an eighth of an atom. So let me let me draw that here. I'm gonna I'm gonna increase the size of this window here. If I drew this out, I can have I'm just gonna draw one face, and it's exactly the same on each one of the six faces. I have one atom at the center, right, like that, and then each corner has got an atom, like that. And then if I were to extend this uh, this way. that this be copy and paste here and here and on the other three faces that you cannot see. Okay, and so that's what they're trying to show you here. Uh, and so they, they omitted some of the circles. It's not necessarily uh, exactly what it looks like, but they're showing you that each one of the faces has these three big spheres and then each corner is supposed to get this. Okay, so the equivalent number of atoms that you have inside of this cube uh, well, each atom has an eighth of an each sorry each corner has an eighth of an atom, so I have one equivalent atom from each corner, and then each face has half an atom, so I have three atoms um, all together from the six faces. So the equivalent number of atoms inside that cube is four. There aren't actually four in here. Is you add all the fractions up and it becomes four. Then you have this number called the coordination number, which in math is also known as the kissing number. And so this talks about uh, how many spheres each one sphere touches. So if I look at one sphere, how many spheres is it tangent to? And it's going to touch uh, 12 nearest neighbors. Right? And you can prove that mathematically. It's a mathematical uh, construction rather than uh, like a science thing. Oh, and then we do see it in, uh, in practice. So, so that, that works. Now, this, the fact that this is a cube doesn't mean anything. It doesn't have any physical meaning. This cube is just something that is convenient for me to describe uh, the copy and paste nature of this structure. So I don't want this A, which is the length of the cube. It doesn't mean anything to me. So I'm going to get try to get rid of that A. And how do I do that? I know that A is equal to 2 root 2 R. Why? Well, let's, let's look at this again. And I'm going to draw this um, a little bit bigger so you can see it. Uh, and so you'll understand where this comes from. So if I drew this bigger, this one face of the sphere of the cube, if I have one atom like that, excuse me, I'm not drawing. Imagine it's a circle. Um, and then this, these are the corner atoms like that. Then I can say that this is, well, let me just show it you. This is a circle. This is a circle. This is a circle, but they're mostly outside of this square. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm just trying to show you that this length here is a radius of this circle. And all the circles are the same size. Um, I'm just drawing this for simplicity. So if I were to draw this diagonal, what do I know about the length? I know I get one radius from here to here. I know I get another radius from here to the center of this thing. And I get another radius from here to this thing here, and I get another radius here. So that means that my diagonal is equal to 4r, OK? So that's cool. Now, if I'm looking at um, the side of this cube, it's a, because it's a cube. So this is a, and this is a. And so what do we know about the diagonal from two squares? Well, it's the Pythagorean theorem. So if this is A and this is A, then this red line here in terms of A would be the square root of 2A, right? As, as you remember from geometry, if I have a right angle and I have an A and an A, I can say that A squared plus A squared um, is equal to this diagonal squared, squared B. So that means it's 2. Um, uh, 2a squared. So that means that each d is the root 2 of a. So 
that means that right here I have root two of a. Uh, so the dia my diagonal here is equal to root two a. So that's my relationship between the radius and the a, and you could see that directly in here. And that's what they did. So a is equal to two root two r, uh, or r is equal to root two a over four, which is basically what I just showed you. So uh, that's the relationship between a and r in the face centered cubic. Let's calculate packing factor. So that, that what I'm trying to say here is, so I have a bunch of spheres inside, right? Um, and you can see there's a bunch of empty white spaces. Uh, I cannot fill the entire cube with spheres. That's never gonna happen because they're spherical and the cube is well cubical. So I can't get them to fit 100% of the space. So what percent of the space is occupied by atoms is what I'm trying to ask. Well, if I have the volumes of all the atoms and I have the volume of the cell, I can get the fraction of the, of the cube that is occupied by atoms, okay? So the, what's the volume of my cell? Well, that's simple. I know that each side of the cube is A, so the volume of my cell is just a cube, okay? What's the volume of all the atoms? If I imagine as we have that they are each a sphere, that means that uh, each sphere is four thirds pi r cubed, okay? And as a reminder, we have the equivalent number of four atoms, four spheres inside of the cube. So each sphere is this volume and I have four of them. So it's four times this volume and I divide it by a cubed. So let me simplify that. That becomes 16 over three pi r cubed, which is four times four with three pi r cubed. And the bottom is a cubed, but a cubed is useless to me because well, A is not, I can't do anything with this A, I can't quantify this, but I do know that A is two root R. So if I plug that in here directly, two root R, and, and simplify it a little bit, I get that it's 16 root two R cubed. Now notice that the R cubes cancel, and that's good. And then all I'm left with are numbers. So I can plug this into a calculator, this is a constant. So I get that it's 0.74. What does it mean? That the total volume of the atoms uh, over the total volume of the cell is 0.74. That means that 74% of my cube is occupied by spheres and about 26% is empty space. So that gives me an idea of how well packed this unit cell is and how it gives me an idea of the density of this thing, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. So the four things you should know about FCC, I have four atoms, equivalents of four atoms in the cube. I have 12 nearest neighbors for each one of the spheres. Uh, the ratio between the, the relationship, sorry, between A and R is this, um, and the fact that the atomic packing factor is 0.74. Okay, so let's continue now and talk about the body centric cubic. And so let me draw that for you here. Uh, this one is a bit of a, a simpler thing. So I have, uh, it, it's similar in scope to the FCC, but it's a bit different means is that it will give us a uh, different numbers. Uh, so we need to discuss that a little bit. So I have, I have my cube, okay? And what I'm saying is that right at the center of this cube, I have an entire sphere. Okay, so imagine it touches all the entire thing. The, I have a ball inside of a cube. This is a ball inside a cube. The entire sphere is inside this cube, okay? And so, and I know that each one of this, that I have an eighth of a, an atom of a sphere and each one of the corners. That's what they're trying to show you here, okay? Uh, so I have a sphere inside of this cube, totally. And then I have an eighth of an atom in each one of the corners. So the equivalent number of atoms in the BCC instead of four is two, okay? The coordination number is eight. And how do I get the lattice radius relation? Well, I'll, I'll, but I may leave that as a homework assignment, but it's just another construction like I did before uh, where I'm relating geometries. Uh, basically what you do is if I do give it to you for homework as a hinter, you draw the diagonal of the cube from here to the bottom here, and you try to relate that length, which will be, I believe, 4R, to, uh, 
to A, and you'd get this. So the relationship here is A is equal to four root three over three R. And again, the atomic packing factor, just like here, is the total volume of all the atoms in the cell divided by the volume of the cell. Uh, the volume of the cell is still A cubed. The total volume now will be two times four over three pi R cubed, because I have two atoms per cell, right? So I have two times four over three pi R cubed, which is uh, 16 uh, over three pi R cubed this way. Uh, I'm sorry, it should be eight. This would be eight here. This is not right. This would be eight here, where the mouse cursor is. Is it an eight? Okay. Uh, and then I divide that by a cubed. Um, and then a cubed is four root three over three R. And when I cube that and simplify it, I get this. And when you plug this into, you see the R's cancel out. This is an eight again, I'm sorry. When you plug it into the calculator, you get that it's 68%. So that means that 68% of this cube is occupied by, uh, by atoms, whereas in the base center cubic, it was 74%. So I, 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 this is a little bit uh, worse in packing than this. This is, this is an optimal packing. This is actually the highest physical limit we can reach for packing is about 74%. The 68 is obviously lower. So the BCC structure is less dense than the FCC structure. And the last one I'll talk about is the HCP. I'll talk about it at least. Um, if, as far as I'm, I'm going to show you this. Don't, don't worry about how to get to this. The coordination number is 12, like before. The total number of, of atoms in this is six. And you get that the atomic packing factor of HCP is exactly the same as the FCC. Uh, and it's 74%. And here, the unit cell is hexagonal. So when I do a copy and paste of this, of this thing, it will be these hexagons rather than cubes, uh, which is not a big deal. Uh, OK. And so I just want to talk really briefly about the difference between hexagonal close pack and face-centered cube, cubic. As you can see, they both give you 74%. So how the heck does that happen? Well, I can envision. Uh, so imagine a bunch of billiard balls like this, an A, and you, put a bunch, and you balance a bunch of billiard balls on top of that. Okay, if you, uh, so we call this layer A, and this is layer B. If on top of layer B, I uh, repeat layer A so that the white spheres are directly over the black spheres, see that they, so if I didn't have the B here at all, uh, the, it would fall and hit and be exactly, you wouldn't be able to see the A spheres at all. It would be completely covered by the, by the white spheres. That's what that means, the A, B, A thing. Whereas ABC means that I'm, I'm putting the C spheres um, in the, uh, I'm offsetting them a little bit so they're not identical to A. So I have three different layers here. So HCP would be repeat AB, 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 whereas FCC is ABC, 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 ABC. So you could see that the, the atomic packing factor should be exactly identical, uh, but the structure will be a little bit different, okay? And let's talk about density next. 